Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'll ask that you please take your seats. Please check your cell phones. Make sure they're turned off or at least on silent. iPads. Your Fitbit. <laughs> now we ask that you please stand as we welcome the members of the Columbia City Council. At this time, I would like to present the Honorable Mayor Stephen K. Benjamin. Please remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the City of Columbia Honor Guard. Preceded by the singing of the national anthem by our Sam Lapper singers.
This time, please welcome Chaplain Byron Powers of the Columbia Police Department. He will be delivering our invocation. Shall we pray? <clears throat> our Heavenly Father, as we are gathered here this evening to hear an address regarding the state of our city, we anticipate hearing a report that it is well. And we can only say that as we reflect on where you have brought us from and what you have brought us through and where you have brought us to. Prevalent in our minds tonight are the things that our city has gone through in the past year, particularly the unprecedented flood and the tragic loss of one of our CPD officers, Stacy Case. Lord, we thank you so much that you provided us with your grace to make it through. And as we reflect upon your provision in 2015, we anticipate that you will continue to help us in 2016. So Lord, as I pray on behalf tonight of our first responders, I pray for our first responders. We pray for, for the protection, their peace, their strength in their homes, marriages, and children. We pray for angelic protection as they are the first responders in crisis situations. We pray for their emotional, mental, and physical strength and well-being. We pray that you would guide them to make wise choices in spontaneous situations. We pray that they would have compassion. We pray that every first responder would have a foundation of faith in their life. We pray that they would exhibit integrity and honesty and dedication. And Lord, as I've prayed intentionally for our first responders, we can say the same prayer, a blessing over our mayor, Stephen Benjamin, over our city council, over our leaders, and over every person and constituent of our city. We pray for peace and protection. We pray for angelic protection, for well-being, for wisdom, for knowledge, for a personal relationship with you, for integrity, and for keeping us. As we listen to our mayor, give us a heart of an expectancy, anticipation. We have this hope because you tell us in your word that the plans you have for us are good to give us a future and a hope. We believe these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank, you. Thank you, Chaplain Powers, for that fervent prayer. Uh, to further exemplify our passion for the arts, please join me in welcoming Dr. Ed Madden, Columbia's Poet Laureate. I'm going to read a poem called At the Gervais Street Bridge Dinner. At the Gervais Street Bridge Dinner, 18 October 2015. And here we all are, this golden hour on the river, on a bridge between two cities, a bowl of blue sky and gold light above us, the brown water below us, behind us, beyond, the current beneath all our conversations, and later the lanterns all coming on. Jay says there was this woman, Rachel, not really affected, but needed to do something, needed to help there in his neighborhood, clipboard in hand. She made sure that everyone got what they needed as the floods receded down the streets and people assessed what was left. Someone makes a toast to the first responders walking by, a downed policeman, to people making their way together, finding their feet together. A mayor says, the rivers don't divide us, they bring us together. And with each toast we make, all of us gathered at the long tables, the river threading all of our conversations. With each toast, a gust of wings above us, a flyover of geese following the river home. And in the dark, those rough voices still singing. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Dr. Madden. Now, I, I have the pleasure of introducing our city manager, Ms. Teresa Wilson. Good evening. 
Welcome to the 2016 State of the City Address. On behalf of Mayor Benjamin and Columbia City Council, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We are thankful for the presence of all of Columbia citizens this year in the city's home, the People's Place here at City Hall. And we would also like to acknowledge at this time several members of the clergy and other officials who have joined us. So this is the point in time where you have to charge it to my heart if I forget anybody, because we don't like to do that. We like to welcome everyone here for the State of the City Address. If there are any members of the clergy, please stand and be recognized. Thank you. We'd like to recognize all elected officials. I know I see members of Richland County Council here, and I'm sure there are others. Please stand and be recognized if you're an elected official. <laughs> Appointed administrators, presidents, representatives of higher education institutions, any state agency heads, if you are here, please stand and be recognized. And of course, the members of our judiciary, to include our chief administrative judge, Dana Turner, and all of our wonderful municipal judges here with us tonight. Please stand. <laughs> judge Benjamin, I wanted you to stand for that as well, but we certainly are about to recognize the family members um, who I personally thank the families of the mayor and council members who are here with us this evening and ask them to stand. I say this often, but because I work so closely with members of council, I recognize the sacrifices that they um, take on a daily basis, which is also a sacrifice of their time and their treasures from their families. So it is so important that we recognize them and honor their service to our community this evening. Speaking of sacrifices, I want to share how I personally witnessed the willingness of our City of Columbia family, the members of our employees who worked so diligently and, and dedicated themselves in extra special ways this past year. Um, they, I guess I should say I'm humbled and honored that I have the opportunity to work with the most caring, dedicated, and committed group of men and women I've ever had the pleasure to know. And if there are City of Columbia employees in the room, which there are many, please stand and be recognized at this time. Thank you. I am proud of each and every one of them, and I want to thank them for everything they do on a daily basis. Obviously, I could not do what I do without a very dedicated senior administrative team. Two of them are here, three with our city attorney, Jeff Palin, our CFO and assistant city manager, Missy Gentry, our assistant city manager of our operations, Teresa Knox, our city attorney. Our senior assistant city manager is out of town, but here in spirit, please stand. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the senior administrative staff. And I witnessed, um, as I mentioned, uh, stream valor as they do every day, but particularly this year, the work of our chief of police, Skip Holbrook, our fire chief, Aubrey Jenkins, and their command staffs. Um, and Sheriff Lott, I have to acknowledge your presence here because we were a threesome during that October 215 um, period of time where the three um, public safety officials led this city so nobly and I think we need to recognize them. <laughs> 2015 was certainly a year of great challenges, but it was also a year that demonstrated the great strength of our city. We certainly were on the world stage for many reasons, and I think we all know those reasons that we experienced through the summer months and through the fall. The city of Columbia experienced a historic tragedy, but as a community, we rallied together to help each other during a time of extreme crisis. As we look ahead into 2016, we are prepared to work every day to rebuild and recover because we are strong 
We are Columbia Strong, which is a hashtag that you're going to see us continue to use for some time. Our strength comes from our citizens and our city leaders who are right here before you, and they are focused on the vision of making Columbia an even greater city. With that said, the time has come to introduce our mayor, the Honorable Stephen K. Benjamin. He is someone who is definitely focused on the strengths of our city. He is focused on what binds us together as one Columbia. And on behalf of the staff, as I tell him every year at this time, we wish him God's blessings, he and his family, always. And it is my pleasure to welcome Mayor Benjamin as he comes forward to deliver the 2016 State of the City Address. Thank you. Members of City Council and all of my fellow elected officials, Sheriff Lott and Councilman Livingston and others who I may not be able to see as uh, readily in the crowd, all of our wonderful neighborhood leaders, uh, Madam City Manager and her talented staff, um, General Cloutier, uh, and all the leaders from Fort Jackson, uh, training the greatest fighting force the world has ever known. Um, we're thankful to rightfully hold the title of the most militarily uh, friendly city in America uh, for the last 100 years. Uh, together, we've weathered uh, BRAC, along with our Chamber of Commerce, helping lead the way the SPEA process. Uh, and we hope that together, we can continue to display why we believe we should spend the next 100 years together as well. Hua. Uh, my God-given, Parents, Samuel and Maggie, Benjamin, the best parents a man could ever ask for, are my incredible in-laws, Donald and Adrian Gist, uh, my wonderful uh, nephew and, and sister-in-law, uh, my incredible wife and my smiling babies uh, grinning at me right now. I often tell DeAndre that I wouldn't be half the man I am without her as she agrees with me. I want to thank my beautiful daughters for leaving dance practice early to come to Daddy's speech again. Uh, very thankful. Um, to our citizens, the great citizens of Columbia. Um, I've often been criticized at the haste or the speed at which I try to move Columbia forward to reach her full potential. Um, asked why he wasn't satisfied with the slow, incremental progress in civil rights proposed by some, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would often quote his mentor, the great educator and pastor, activist, South Carolinian and president of Morehouse College, Dr. Benjamin Elijah Mays, who would caution his students on the fleeting nature of our time here on earth. Life, he'd say, is just a minute, only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon you, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to you to use it. You must suffer if you lose it, give account if you abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. So I come to you this evening, recognizing that today marks five years, six months, and 25 days since I was blessed with the opportunity to serve the people of our great city as your mayor. For my daughter, Jordan Grace, who loves math, that's 2,035 days, 48,840 hours, 2,930,400 minutes well, together. Some of those minutes have been much longer than other minutes, I must say. <laughs> and while longevity has its place, um, how should we measure our time together? Well, as expression goes, and God we trust, Everyone else bring me data. So here are the numbers. 9.5%, that was Metro unemployment on July 1st, 2010, when we started this journey together. 4.9%, that's Metro unemployment now. Today, down nearly half and lower than national and state averages. 46,436 
So how many jobs we've helped create since taking office by seeding an environment ripe for private investment and expansion while demonstrating leadership by raising the minimum wage for all city employees, this council, to $10.10 per hour. That's nearly 23 jobs created every single day since taking office, and more than a quarter of those positions, 11,307, are open and available and taking applications right now. 710 openings for registered nurses, 294 for truck drivers, 178 openings for occupational therapists, 172 openings for computer programmers. And if we filled all those jobs right now, we cut unemployment to under 2% in this community. 108 rooms and $18 million investment in the Aloft Hotel, joining a growing number of hotels in our beautiful downtown and our city center. 188,000 square foot and $80 million new law school at the University of South Carolina, $25 million investment at the Horizon 2 USC Center for Applied Innovation. Total quality total logistics expanding to create 100 new jobs, a $100 million mixed use investment at the historic Klein Steel property, $13 million invested at Rosewood Crossing, and $45 million invested at the Pimetta Compress, yes, the Pimetta Compress, and countless others. Over $1.3 billion in new downtown investments since 2014 alone, and with dozens of new retailers committed to the commons at Bull Street and every, mind you, every historic property that we fiercely debated on the Bull Street campus as a city expected to be preserved and adaptively reused. Thanks to the Knight Foundation and the Central Carolina Community Foundation, we'll be working with world-renowned Gell Architects and a new grant to help us start connecting Bull Street through our historic district with all of our uh, hospitality districts into an exciting, connected, pedestrian-friendly experience. The best is yet to come. America's pastime will return to Columbia Spirit Communications Park with the Columbia Fireflies, getting ready for their first pitch on April 14th in a first-class, multi-purpose venue that will host community events and help build our economy for generations. What is as important as the fact it's being built is how our stadium has been built on time, on budget, with $16,276,725 going to local businesses and $5,705,093 going to minority businesses. With our partners at CCEB Venue Partners Contract Construction, Construction Dynamics, Enviro Ag Science, and Barton Malo training dozens of workers through a new workforce development initiative. Most of those workers are either homeless or living in public housing on the job for the very first time in years working on this multi-purpose venue. I want to thank this council for setting high goals and our staff, most notably Gregory Tucker and the folks at CEB, CCEB Venue Partners for proving that's not just what you do, but how you do it. Showing us that not only is there dignity in work, but that we all need to participate in and benefit from this great renaissance. Is that how you define 2,035 days in the life of a city? Maybe it's through our commitment to public safety. $12,275,985 in new funding. 13% in pay raises for our first responders. 54 new police officers hired this year, more than 40% of them minorities, and 300 new Coban body cameras on their way here to be deployed, the first large city in the state that will have full body camera deployment. It's a commitment to 21st century policing and justice for all, recognized and applauded just five days ago, Chief Holbrook, in the White House by none other than the President of the United States himself. Very proud with that. Over four million pounds of recycling collected in just four months since introducing our new recycling roll carts. That's nearly a 50% increase over the prior eight-month average, and the numbers are still going up. Together, we've cut sewer overflows by 68%. We've cut over $3.4 million in transfers from our water 
and sewer funding invested over $420 million in maintenance and improvements to our water and sewer infrastructure. I'm going to say it again just in case you missed it. We've cut over $3.4 million in transfers from our water and sewer fund and invested over $420 million in maintenance and improvement to our water sewer infrastructure. I'm moving forward. And maybe some of the things we never imagined. 3,500 new students living in downtown apartments. Two upgrades to our credit score from Standard & Poor's and Moody's. One symbol of division and hate pulled down and put away for now and all time. <laughs> 2,035 days and we're on the right path. New development, creating new jobs and new revenues, allowing us to make new investments in infrastructure, public safety, parks and recreation, and new initiatives that improve quality of life, which in turn attracts new residents and new talent building new industry that sparks even newer development, an ecosystem, an engine of growth that could drive downtown to 40,000 residents, millennials, families, empty nesters by 2000, year 2030. It's so ambitious that it's almost unimaginable. And then on day 1,921, the truly unimaginable did happen. Over 11 trillion gallons of water fell from the sky. 11 trillion. 16 inches of rain recorded on Forest Drive on the very first day alone. Eight feet of water, devastating. Shops at Rosewood, Rosewood Crossing. 45 dams failed. 541 roads closed. 6,415 911 calls and 2,697 agency dispatches on the very first day alone. Yes, we lived in the command center, Sheriff Lott, Chief Holbrook, Chief Jenkins, and everyone else. A city manager did an able job along with her team. Hundreds of families, please. <laughs> Hundreds of families evacuated in Colombia with $12 billion in damage and 96,829 requests for FEMA disaster aid across our state. 19 of our beloved South Carolinians died in this thousand year flood. and We all went back to zero. In a letter to his wife after a particularly bloody battle during the Civil War, General Wim Tecumseh Sherman wrote, the great tragedy, unimaginable tragedy, can change a person, can change a people, can twist and turn you at your very core and you can't turn back. The flood did that to us. It changed us in a way that nothing has because it was a disaster. Unlike anything to befall this city for 150 years since Sherman himself burned the city to the ground. I was out there every day in the neighborhoods, simply washed away by rushing waters with many of you. I saw their faces, listened as they told me how their neighbors had, kick in, had to kick in their bedroom windows so they could climb to safety, how it all happened so fast. I watched as they pointed out the line on the wall where the water crested. I helped them as they took precious family photos from a soaked album and laid them on the grass in the front yard to allow them to dry. I talked to a nearly 70-year-old man who had lost every single worldly possession. Strong, stout, and tough as a pine knot. I held him as he cried like a newborn child. A disaster like that can bring out the worst in people. We've seen it before. But here in Columbia, South Carolina, something amazing happened. These people, this city that had every reason to seek out the darkness and hide there, falling deeper and deeper into misery, instead found the strength to pull their feet back under themselves and not only stand, but to march forward. I saw police officers and firefighters, Chief Jenkins, regular army and national guard, I saw utility workers, 
working ungodly hours and unthinkable conditions, putting themselves in harm's way over and over and over again. I saw rescue workers and hospital workers turn shift after shift until they had to be pulled off because they wouldn't rest unless someone made them. I saw men and women, families who lost everything they own, reach out and give of themselves freely to neighbors who somehow, somehow had it even worse than they did. I saw restaurants delivering trays of free food to shelters, shop owners donating their wares, students helping clear molding, drywall, and deacons delivering bottled water. So everyone, community groups, and Girl Scouts, Baptists, AMEs, I saw the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Bloomberg Philanthropy, the fashion industry even kicked in. I saw volunteers from as far away as the great nation of Israel come to our aid. I saw a world-class city become a city of heroes. And I want to take this moment to say thank you. So please stand every first responder, please, every city employee, and every volunteer, every man, woman, and child, stand up, babies, stand up, who gave something of themselves, anyone who volunteered, no matter how small, no matter how small, so that we as a city might rise above those troubled waters, stand so we can say thank you to you. Your simple acts of kindness turn a thousand year flood away. It's because of you I can stand here tonight and without hesitation or qualification declare that the state of our city is strong. It is strong. You see, in that moment, we truly saw what it means to be one Columbia, a fabric of families and individuals from across to a wide spectrum of separate circumstance, beholden only to each other, woven free and indivisible into the greater whole of community. That which has always been our vision, to be not only to become the most talented, educated, and entrepreneurial city in America, but to do it together. And do it together we must. And I urge council to join with me and our citizens as we turn disaster into opportunity and innovation. The disaster of three months and 23 days ago brought devastation to our city, but it also brought opportunity. The opportunity to rebuild not only our homes and our public infrastructure, but to reimagine our city as a whole. And we must seize that opportunity with urgency. Life is just a minute. Only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon you, can't refuse it. Didn't seek it, didn't choose it. But it's up to you to use it. You must suffer if you lose it. Give account if you abuse it. Just a tiny little minute. But an eternity is in it. We must repair the damage to our roads, bridges, water, and sewer infrastructure to not only restore them to what they were, but to make them stronger, smarter, and more resilient. Imagine if we took that opportunity to make our roads more walkable and bicycle friendly, if we beautified our city gateways, installing underground conduit, conduit on our march to becoming a gigabit city, if we made long overdue investments to too often overlooked corridors like Two Notch Road and Farrow Road and Beltline Boulevard, matching the commitment that we're delivering on North Main Street. It's time for these corridors to reflect the strength and vibrancy of the great neighborhoods that surround them. It's time for us to work to build a seamless city. We can do it. We must continue in the spirit, the strong spirit of regionalism, bringing together all of our regional partners to reclaim the Gills Creek watershed and restore a natural buffer that prevents future catastrophic flooding. Imagine if we applied that same ingenuity and innovation to all those neighborhoods affected by the storm and to all neighborhoods in the city of Columbia, compensating homeowners and demolishing abandoned and hopelessly dilapidated buildings and clearing overgrown lots and replacing them with inviting neighborhood pocket parks where our children can play and families can grow strong. Imagine transforming these structures into the cornerstones of community, building the public realm. Imagine rebuilding our great canal while also leveraging New Riverfront 
investment, new developments that build our economy and promote tourism while preserving our watersheds. I'm committed to moving forward with the expansion of our regional convention center to accommodate this growth in tourism so that more national and international conferences will bring their dollars to Columbia and do so in a way that is responsible and sustainable. And while we're at it, let's launch a tourism initiative to connect Columbia to Charleston by launching a small flotilla of small watercraft on a fact-finding mission from our riverbanks of Columbia to the holy city of Charleston. This will be an effort designed to encourage nature-based tourism and will enhance the familiarity with not only with our waterfront, but also raise funds for our Congaree Riverkeeper. Anybody interested in taking that tour with me? Imagine transforming disaster and innovation. I didn't see too many hands go up, so we'll have to discuss that. We can do it. We was partnering with the, with the private sector and creative nonprofits to meet the housing needs of our citizens. The countless men and women and children who were left with no shelter and nowhere to turn when October's rushing waters destroyed their homes. Imagine working with our development corporations, private developers and nonprofits to develop real, affordable workforce housing, bringing the same focus and the same incentives we use to spur our student housing boom so that families in Columbia don't have to work two and maybe three jobs just to afford the rent. We're tearing down Gonzales Gardens. Now let's give these working families a healthy and happy place to live and raise families. Imagine if we leverage local creativity with federal dollars, with support from local, state, and national nonprofits to put quality roofs over our families' heads. Imagine turning disaster into innovation. Imagine if we did the same for our hundreds of homeless veterans across our city, giving them quality, sustainable, low-cost housing. We need to continue to make housing first work and partnering with the VA and groups like the United Way and MOC and Fast Forward to provide the medical, mental, health, and job training resources that our veterans need to make sure they get off the street and they never go back. Let's commit ourselves to making veteran housing Let us commit ourselves to making veteran homelessness in Colombia a thing of the past in 2016. Last year, we invested over $1.3 million to our gap, map, and pair programs to help homeowners and landlords alike make significant repairs and substantial improvements to their homes while investing over $1.2 million and leveraging $3.8 million in private dollars to help families in Colombia realize the dream of home ownership. That's a total community investment of more than $6.4 million. Imagine if we doubled down on that commitment, helping families bridge the gap between what they need and what FEMA will help them pay for. We can do it for our residents, and we can also do it for small businesses. In fact, we're doing it because tonight, I'm proud to announce that we're launching this week the Small Business Disaster Relief Fund, providing critical assistance to small businesses struggling to recover from the October flood, not covered by FEMA or private insurance. We can do it. We can support our small businesses. It's a must that we do. <laughs> Imagine a new commitment to building a smart city a high, with high-speed gigabit fiber and focused neighborhood Wi-Fi. That not only gives our students access to a 21st century education, closing the homework gap, but creates an environment for a new explosion of small business investment in high-tech knowledge economy jobs. Imagine the real impact we can make on people's lives. Imagine what's possible, the future waiting right there for us. I said we can't afford to wait, because life is just a minute. It's up to us to use it. A child born today will not ever dial a rotary telephone. We'll likely never use a payphone or even know what a phone book is never have a home phone number, and probably not even know what a dial tone sounds like. What is today cutting edge technology, like facial recognition, genetic screening, and self-driving cars for them, will be commonplace, taken for granted 
if not already obsolete. Tomorrow is a world of wonder waiting for us, but it isn't promised to anyone. That's why I'm committed to acting today. I'm committed to ambitious new goals for GED training, job training, and workforce development, filling those 11,307 jobs and many more. I'm build, committed to building new programs that will engage a new generation, preparing them as best we can for that unknown future with summer jobs and expanded apprenticeship opportunities. Not only have we made strategic investments, like our expanded health and sports programs and a new state-of-the-art pool in Greenview Park, which will open this year. Did you just clap for that, honey? You can clap for Greenview Park. Go ahead. <laughs> but working with the Columbia Urban League, this council, we helped provide 500 summer jobs to our children last year, a 100% increase year over year. And we're committed to even more strategic community-based jobs and health initiatives, including working with partners like Palmetto Health. I'm committed to working with One Columbia and the leaders of our credible creative community to developing a detailed and comprehensive arts and culture master plan that recognizes the arts role both in education and economic development. We're committed to expanding our work with My Brother's Keeper, including a new citywide literacy initiative, the Mayor's Barbershop Books Program. And thanks to a new partnership with Richard Library, Cockies, Reading Express, Alvin Irby, and Barbershop Books, and a generous donation from Cigna, we'll put 10,000 books in 100 barbershops across Columbia over the next two years. We're going to make sure our children, especially our boys, have access to age-appropriate and culturally relevant reading material in the familiar and comfortable environment. We're going to put reading and education back into everyone's lives, and we're going to start right now. I'll say it again if you like me to. <laughs> I'm committed to bring a new technology to our public transportation, committed to pursuing light and commuter rail, public and private partnerships for new parking that pulls us all out of our cars and alternative energy driven by new advances in solar technology. I'm committed. <laughs> I'm committed to continuing in our march to make Columbia a solar city. Committed to helping our neighbors with flooding mitigation, to help us with flooding mitigation um, by starting a program to help deliver a thousand rain barrels to families across our city. I'm committed to working with the incredible committee of citizens and compassionate community leaders who work to give us a fantastic Blue Ribbon Report on how we become a no-kill city. It's something we must do. I'm most excited about the fact that all the ideas I've shared with you, some have been original, but most have come from this collected body of individuals up here. All of us committed to making sure we will do this together, and together we must. I'm committed to continuing the fiscal discipline that has brought us five years of budget surplus, committed to eliminating the water and sewer transfer without raising taxes, without limiting services, and without cutting funds to public safety. Because the progress we've made in police and fire and 911 will stall, stagnate, and fail without continued investment. We need more cops on the street, not less. And we need them to be better trained than ever. And that is our commitment to you. I believe we can do it, you and I, and all of us together, because I see a city, a great city, bound by love, forged by tragedy, and focus on a future of opportunity. So let us move forward as one people, as one Columbia, with clarity and urgency as united in fair weather as we are in a flood. One of our citizens summed it up perfectly, devastated by the storm. She said, I believe that God shapes us with the disasters and the trials and tribulations. He has molded us. It's up to us, my fellow Colombians, to take it 
the rest of the way. We've only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon us. Can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to us to use it. We must suffer if we lose it, give account if we abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but an eternity is in it. Thank you, may God bless you, and may God continue to bless the great city of Columbia. grateful for the mayor's vision. At this time, we would like to welcome Pastor James Rawson of Kingdom Life Ministries. He will deliver our benediction. To our great mayor and to all the city officials, I am optimistic and enthusiastic about the future of Columbia. How about you? And I'm grateful. So let's look to the Lord as we leave this place. Father, we thank you for this moment that we've been given and afforded the opportunity to hear vision. Your word declares to us that without a vision, people perish. And we thank you because we have vision tonight, so we will not perish. And we will thrive. Not only will we survive, but we will thrive and go higher than our wildest imaginations. And we thank you tonight for our leadership, the great leadership of this great city. And I pray now, God, that as we leave this place, but never your presence, keep us as an apple of thine eye. Watch over and protect us from everything that is evil. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule abide in our hearts now and forever. And every glad heart say, amen.